Hey folks, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Today we're going to do a little bit about some breeding stuff. So I mentioned in the last video that I was trying to get the fish room all set up for various kinds of breeding. So we've got the rams, we've got the white cloud mountain minnows, and we've got the rainbows down here. So if you watched that last video, you'll notice that I had put in a big bunch of java moss for the rainbows to spawn in. I've taken that out and put that into the White Cloud Mountain Minnows tank. So the reason I've taken the Java Moss out of this tank and put it into this tank for breeding purposes is that these guys are actually pretty good at looking after their young. So these guys will chase the females into the big pile of moss, drop the eggs in there, the eggs will hatch and turn into fry and everyone will be quite happy because they usually don't eat their fry. Whereas these guys not so much so what I can do with a spawning mop is put the spawning mop in let these guys chase the females into the spawning mop drop the eggs and then every couple of days I can take the spawning mop out check it see what it's like and then put it back in and then when I take the spawning mop out and it has got eggs I can then put it into one of these tanks um, or these tanks and use that to raise the fry up uh, a little bit more safe and I'm going to get some spawning mops or breeding mops and put them in there and I thought I haven't got any so I need to make a couple so I'll show you how to do it so let's do that so the idea with the spawning mop is obviously it gives your fish a place to spawn so if you have fish I'm using it for rainbow fish in this case but it might be goldfish anything that likes to spawn in and amongst vegetation basically so a few things you're going to need some wool preferably green and this is just acrylic green wool. I think the idea behind the green is that it imitates some plant life. Um, something to wrap it around. I've got a placemat in this case. There's a catch in this. <laughs> um, you want something that's roughly the size of the tank, the height of the tank. So this is a little bit shorter, but given substrate and headroom, there or thereabouts. And then something to go in the top of the mop. Now that can either be something to weigh it down, like in this case it's just a bit of alpha grog, uh, filter media, or you could put in something to keep it afloat, like cork. So if you want it to be a floating mop, cork. I like to use um, the heavier stuff because it will either, you can have something that will weigh it down, or when you see when I get to it, there are other ways of keeping it floating. Um, but yes, so what we're trying to achieve is basically lots of strands of this, together that the fish can go in and out of and um, generally the males chase the females and drop their eggs and they fertilize them in here uh, and this provides a perfect place for the eggs to get caught in and then you can take that out and move it into another tam tank to raise the fry that's the idea so we'll start off another thing that's quite useful is a bowl wool in bowl and then you can pull it out as you need so it just gets, in my experience, just get started. And um, this isn't my design. This isn't my. Um, I didn't come up with this way of doing it. So generally, just wrap it around. I've seen various other people doing it. I think mine's most like the way that Marks Aquatics does it. But just wrap it around a bunch of times. You're trying not to get it too tight because it's pain in the bum to get it off when it's too tight. But just keep going basically and you're aiming for 97 um, loops, that's very important. Right, so you end up with something a bit like this. Um, obviously, 97 was just a number I picked out of fresh air. Go for something where it gets to roughly the size you want. And once you've done a couple, you'll kind of realize what that is. So you've got essentially a loop here. What we're gonna do now is, got some scissors. I'm gonna cut this one off um, a bit. Have this much dangling free and what I'm going to do is tuck this under so I'll take the free end drop it through until it gets to the top and just tie a little knot in that 
whether you can see that or not. Um, let's tie that fairly loosely. Again, we're not going to make it anything tight at this point. This is just to hold it together. Little knot. Check out the look of concentration on the face here. So what happens when you've got big sausage fingers trying to do a delicate job. Right, there we go. So we take that off. Just slide it off. And this is what I meant earlier about not making it too tight. No longer need this. And we've got a big loop like so. So where I've roughly tied it here at the top, I'm going to put in my little bit of alpha grog. I'm going to wrap it around like so, so we've got something there. And that tail that I left on is where I'm now going to try and make it a little bit tighter underneath that piece of alpha grog. Leaving a loop in so that I can tie a little knot underneath it. Um, can't remember the name of this knot or anything like that, but there we go. So we've got something like that. Then the next thing to do is get your loop, take your scissors, and cut. So there we have our mop. Now, if we were to stick that in right now it would probably just dye the water green so I'm going to boil this or put it in boiling water a couple of times see if we can get out any of the kind of chemicals or additives they use to preserve the wool or colour it and dye and then we can just drop it in the tank so I'll get it under a kind of rolling boil that's probably too much and it's not much of a cooking recipe just basically dunk it in and what we'll do is we'll give it five ten minutes in there see what the water looks like and then keep repeating until the water's clear basically. So this has been in for about 10 minutes or so and the water is completely clear so we probably didn't need to do this step with this particular wool but I would advise that you definitely do do it just to make sure. So this stuff's good so if you're interested and you're in the UK it's this I got it from Dunham Mill Robin Double Knit Wool so the next stage is just cool that down. Hi! So even though we didn't need to boil it to get rid of the dye or anything like that, it still is a good idea to do that because it seems to fluff up the wool a little bit, make it a little bit distressed, which is good for catching the eggs in it when you drop it into the tank. So last step is just to drop this into the tank now. I'm going to do it. OK. She's Let's do it. go. Right, rainbow fish tank. That one. This one. The one I'm pointing at. This one. Yep. Okay. Now I gotta drop it in here. Mm -hmm. This is the camera on. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just dropping it in. So as you can see, when she drops it, just just let go. Yeah. It will just fall to the bottom because it's got that little bit of stone in there, and that's fine. So. The, that will do the job perfectly, the fish will go in and out of that and they'll lay their eggs in there. But if you wanted to make it a floating one, the other way to do it would be take it by the top there and just pull one of the strands and attach it to the top of the tank like this and then the stuff can just dangle down like that. Or if you have it as a cork one, that will just float there with stuff like that. But this is more than good for the rainbow fish, they'll be fine with that. And all we need to do is wait a little while, get some more females actually, and then wait a little while, we should be able to pull eggs out of that. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, because it's not actually a plant, I could just grab that, inspect it, put it back again. Whereas if they lay their eggs in this stuff, can't really do that. So it was hard to plant. Mm -hmm. So, say goodbye to everyone. Bye! So that's it, just a very quick tips and tricks type thing there for breeding mops. If you've got any of your own tips and tricks, make sure you leave them in the comments, let me know. Um, I hope that's of some use to anyone, but for now, we'll say bye-bye. And -bye. Uh, don't forget to put the thumbs up and subscribe to uh, his channel. His channel. Definitely.
thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time.